Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back. It's Charlie. It's Friday. June 8, 2018. About 10.30 in the morning. West Coast time. It's a beautiful day. It's about 73 degrees today. It's supposed to get into 82, 84, I think I last saw. <coughs> the whole week is supposed to be into the low to mid 80s. So, you know, I was gonna start this vlog in a whole totally different direction. So, I got into the library, plugged everything up, turned on my computer, got the Chrome turned on. I always turn on my uh, YouTube on first and then check my email and stuff like that. And then off to the right hand side, you get these little, uh, if you got Windows 10, you get these little notifications on uh, Chrome. It tells you, uh, you know, overnight stuff that happened. So the first thing I noticed was Anthony Bourdain. Vlogger, chef, cook, entertainer, dead at 61. Suicide. Depression. Depression. I am best friends with depression. Saw my mom go through it, and it has been over the last few years that I realized that I myself suffer from depression. That's why, to me, it was important to get the help that I needed, my psychiatrist, my psychologist, my therapist, get on my meds. I don't want to go down that road. I tried committing suicide when I was younger, when I was a teen. All I got was a bad hangover and sick to my stomach and throwing up all night and all day. And if anybody knows about depression, it's homeless people. Not experts, but we battle with it all day long. Every day. not worth it. I want to continue to live. That's why I do what I do. That's why you see me cheerful as I am. And kids nowadays don't have it easy with bullying. They can only take so much. Society is so different now than when I was a child. When I was a lot younger than when I was a teenager. So different. And I have a lot of empathy for for being young at this day of age. Adolescence, teenage, I mean shoot, kids committing suicide at twelve. So with that being said, this is personal. But I'm not gonna say don't watch because this is the only communique that I have. This is the only means of communique that I have. To my kids. Christopher, Charlotte, and Carmen. I love you all three so much. Now, I don't know, I can only imagine what you must be going through as far as anger, me not being around, and whatever your mothers have told you, I can probably I could guarantee no I can guarantee it's not the it's not the truth. Look, let me tell you something, children. It took two people to fall in love and to make a relationship, and it took two people. 
to destroy it. I've paid my dues and I continue to pay my dues every day that I wake up being in this situation. That being said, let me tell you something, kids. Christopher, you're the oldest. You got your little sister. I was out of your little sister's life before she was one years old when everything just went to shit. Your grandparents had a lot to do with that. You know, honestly, the only one that was civil and intelligent was your Uncle Casey. <coughs> so when I ended up in Las Vegas and I was struggling, I called your grandma. I asked her for help. I told her I needed some money. On two occasions, to my surprise, because your grandma and I really never got along. It's not that we didn't like each other, it's that your grandma didn't want your mother to get married. If anybody, she had last control over your aunt and your uncle and your mother, it was your mother. She couldn't wait to see Christy get married. She loved it when Casey got married. When your mom, when she found out your mom was, we were gonna get married, she, that was it. She had no control anymore. She couldn't control your grandpa. Grandpa's just gonna get up in the morning and go golfing like he does. But let me tell you kids something, especially you, Christopher. No matter how life gets so bad. Son, you need to talk to someone. If you see your sister just pulling away from the world, not acting normal, talk to her. Ask her what the problem is. It's okay to ask someone, are you sad? Do you feel like doing something silly like hurting yourself? It's okay. In fact, it's, it's better than okay. It's, it's important that you do. Because if you know this person so well and they're not acting right, you need to find out. And don't be afraid to say anything to someone else. Mom, you know, she's not acting right. She's talking about stuff like this. And life is too hard. And I hope you kids are all right. I don't know. One of the reasons why I do what I do, and I put myself on social media, and I also do this, is so you three can eventually find me, get a hold of me. Maybe there's friends of the family, and maybe some of your friends will find, oh, you know what? Your dad's on YouTube. Whereas you probably have been told they have no idea. I'm here. I'm right here in Pasadena. From last accounts that I remember, maybe you're somewhere in Pasadena. You were at uh, your great-grandma's house for a while. But the last thing that I checked was maybe La Crescenta. I don't know. I've always made it a point to stay here because of YouTube. I could have gone anywhere else. I could have gone to Arizona. I could have gone to Texas. I could have gone back to Florida, back to Wisconsin. I didn't. I wanted to stay here for you kids. So in case you needed to get a hold of me or you just wanted to ask me, God damn it, Dad, what's going on? What happened? Always been here. So whatever your mothers are telling you, all three of you, it's not so. Even my friends know this. Even my subscribers have suggested, why don't I just have family? Because of YouTube first and foremost. You, Christopher, and Charlotte. I need to be here close to you. Yeah, I could have gone back to Vegas. 
maybe life would have been a little bit more affordable and easier. But I already made that mistake once, and that's where I met Holly. You know, if anything, me meeting Holly and us getting married, um, for whatever time it lasted, we definitely knew each other emotionally. I mean, we knew when the other person wasn't acting right and stuff like that. And she and I both severely suffered from depression like crazy. When I wasn't working and I was at, staying at home taking care of Carmen, being a stay-at-home parent, there were times that money was so tight I couldn't afford to do the co-payment to go see my psychologist or my psychiatrist or my therapist. There were times when we couldn't afford the co-payment for my medication. But I always made sure that she had hers and she always had her doctor visits because she couldn't handle the depression very well. She would get so depressed that she would just... make dumb decisions in her life. And then I found out, well, there were a few times, a few instances on her legs when she would get home, she'd get undressed and change into her house, house clothes. And I would look at her and go, what, ha what happened to your legs? Oh, there's this table that I keep running into over at the office and stuff, especially when I'm taking paperwork back there. It's so low and you would think I would know about it by now and I keep running into it and, and I'm like, God, that looks, that looks bad. Let me tell you, there were bruises that were huge. I mean, so this is going on and on for a while. And then one day, I just, there was some, some inert feeling and I asked her, I go, I go, Holly, what's really going on here? I go, that can't be a tailor. There, there's no way that you can be that clumsy. Well, I'm a blonde. No, 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 honey, tell me what's really going on. And she started tearing up and crying. I didn't want to tell you. <coughs> tell me what? Well, there's times when I go take a break and I go to the women's bathroom, I go into the handicap stall, and I pound my thighs. I'm like, what? I hit my thighs. I just punch them. Why are you doing that? Because it makes the pain go away. It helps with the pain. I never thought in a million years that my wife would have been, turned out to be a self-mutilator. Not a cutter, that's, but it's self-mutilation offset the pain of the depression and I understand it because for pre-med pre-medication I, I depression it is just it affects you so physically and it would I my body would hurt there are times that I, I, I wouldn't I couldn't get up out of bed you know but with my daughter I she would climb up and she's like daddy daddy and I'm hearing her voice and I still can hear her voice so I'd force myself so I would go without and I always made sure that she had her medication and her psychologist and I told her okay this isn't working the medication and the route you're going with this doctor is not working you got to tell her oh but but she doesn't even charge us for copayment well oh, honey I go, if the medication and the routine isn't working and you're doing this, something's not right. So you gotta, you gotta do something. It's right about the, right around the time when she and I broke our sobriety. Depression, such a terrible thing to have. For any of you that suffer from depression or have loved ones, if you have loved ones that have depression, just keep an eye on them. Talk to them. 
ask some questions. Yeah, you know, I noticed you've been kind of down a little bit lately. Are you all right? Uh, well, I'm asking because I care, you know. I just want to know if you're all right. You, you, haven't been thinking about, you haven't been thinking about doing something like hurting yourself or hurting someone, have you? Just be casual, but be compassionate at the same time. Don't be a jerk about it. Don't be forcefully intrusive. Do it with compassion and love. And you kids, Marie, Carmen, I don't know where you are. I don't know where your mother's taking you. But baby, I'm here. All my information is pretty much down in the description box below. I'm on Facebook, honey. You're my youngest. You're gonna be 10 next month. I get depressed right around this, at this time of the year, just before your birthday. I miss you so much, honey. I can still hear your laughter. We used to spend hours watching SpongeBob. You and your silly little knit cat. Go to Facebook. My phone number's there. In the description box, email me. Both, all three of you kids. That's why I make this public. I don't want to come find out that your mothers have said, oh, well, we had no way of finding you. We had no clue where you were. You could have been halfway around the world. It's not true. I do what I do, and my friends know that I do this because of you three. They're so vital to me. And not to be mean, and not to be a dick about it, but I sometimes wonder how loving your mothers can be. Because if your mothers loved you, they wouldn't be separating us like this. Obviously, they're still bitter. Obviously, they're still mad and they're only thinking about themselves. Because if they were thinking about you, and I'm, trust me, I'm, I'm sure they've taken very well care of you, but if they were thinking about you, I wouldn't be talking to you through this device, on the internet, on YouTube TV. And with everything that's been going around this country, kids getting bullied, people getting killed, people committing suicide, I don't, I don't want you to get to that point. I'm here for you babies. I always have. And your mothers know this. And Christopher and Charlotte, your family knows this, your relatives, your aunt, your uncle, your grandma, your grandpa. Friends of the family, they know this. Someone out there, in that little circle of theirs, is watching me, keeping an eye on me. Knows where I'm at, what I'm doing, what I've been doing, what I've been going through. Like I said, it took two people to fall in love and start a relationship, and it took two people to destroy it. I'm doing my part to make amends to get right with God. But on the other end, they don't know what's going through their mind. So kids, get a hold of me. Ask maybe one of your friends or your friend's parents, can you help me get a hold of my dad? Because at this point, honestly, I don't think your mother would allow it. I don't think your grandparents would allow it. Marie, I definitely don't think that your, your grandma would allow it. She's another one that just, wow. And everything that I went through, your mom lied so bad in court. That's why she's got a record now. She's got a mark on her record. 
ask. Ask for the truth. If you're not getting a straight answer, if you don't feel like getting a straight answer, ask a friend. Ask a friend's parent to help you find a, the right answer and get a, get a way to communicate with them. Christopher, you're getting up there of age. Charlotte, baby. I don't even know what you look like. Christopher, there was a time, the last time that I think I saw you was maybe about a year, almost two years ago. I was coming back from an event with this pastor and we were driving. And I thought I recognized you and your mother one day walking to Lucky Boy and I rolled down the window and I yelled out, Christopher. Do you remember that? Was that you? Because if you remember that, that was me. Anyway. You folks, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Love one another. Help one another. Be kind to each other. Look out after you. Don't ignore the signs. Ask questions. Depression is so destructive on an individual. It leads to so many avenues in life. Drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex, stealing. I mean, it's such a powerful anti-positive emotion. I said this vlog was going to be in a total different direction, but I'll I'll cover that tomorrow. I'm just sad. Don't take today for granted. Or any other day thereafter. But for the moment, pull down your pants and slide on the ice. Because you never know. You just never fucking know. Christopher, Charlotte, Murray, I love you kids, I love you all. Folks, I love you guys. You know the rest. Thank you for sharing this moment with me. I love you, bye.